And now what you're thinking, punk? Did Russell Wilson throw six or only five interceptions? Well, to tell you the truth, I seem to lost track myself in all this excitement. But being this is Russell Wilson, one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the league, and his sandwich will blow your head clean off, you gotta ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? Punk. You guessed it, we have the Denver Broncos. Team individual mock draft on tap. Dangerous Russ and the Denver Broncos. A lot of question marks after a rough, rocky season. But we're gonna we're gonna speed things up. We got some question marks with this team. Figure out some situations. So we're gonna go through the offensive team needs, the defensive team needs, cap situation, free agency. How many fingers do I have left on my hands? I don't know. But from some fun trivia for you, because it is National Trivia Day. Which team in the NFL has the most penalty yards? Which team has the most missed tackles? Which team sucks in the red zone? Well, you guessed it, Denver Broncos. That was a pretty easy question, more of a rhetorical one. But is that, sometimes, you know, look, I, Nathaniel Hacker, maybe some things could have gone better, of course, but a couple of big signs of coaching issues are when you're highly penalized and when you miss tackles as a team. Those are things that are disciplinary issues. And that's why I think when they get a new coach, they need someone who can be a solid rock like a Dan Quinn I could see him coming to this team but someone like that that's who they need to hire that's a whole different conversation we'll have to maybe talk about that later on but let's get into it here starting off with the team needs for the Denver Broncos oh yeah by the way I hope you're cool and hope you're doing well out there man and here is the offensive roster and you see the free agents injuries which they've had a couple of injuries no doubt about it losing Javante Williams was brutal at the beginning of the season but we go on to the team needs Let's start off with Dangerous himself, Russell Wilson. I think, Wilson, I'm sorry. But look, I believe in Russell Wilson in all seriousness. I think he's going to bounce back in a major way next season when they get a new coaching staff in place. Like I talk about, they need someone who's stable. They need a rock, a Dan Quinn, someone like that. They don't need to go out and go crazy or nothing. Just bring in a stable piece to this organization, someone who can be a leader, you know, and, and come in and take control, get disciplinary with things what they need to, right? Clean up the penalties, the missed tackles, those sort of things. They don't need to go out and go crazy with the coaching hire. I know this organization saying they're getting aggressive, but we'll see what they're going to do. Ultimately, I think Russell Wilson will bounce back as he comes through next year and allow Russell Wilson to be Russell Wilson, right? I don't think he's cooked. Let him cook, right? Let him get on the move more. He just hasn't been on the move as much as he has been in prior seasons, and you see that. But he's still a really talented quarterback, and you show the flashes. The flashes of Russell Wilson are still there. It's not like that's gone. So that's why I still tend to believe that Russell Wilson, with a new coaching staff, some changes organizationally, they'll be way, way better as a team because they have talent on this roster. There are a couple areas that they need to get better at. There's no doubt about it, and we'll talk about that as we go along. But ultimately, Brett Rippon is going, he's a free agent, so maybe finding a backup is, is going to be a priority for them. Running back position, just need some more depth, and I feel like they could use a nice third down back would be really helpful, or maybe like a receiving back, should I say, even though Javante Williams can definitely catch, but adding someone else with all your free agents too, and I think Chase Edmonds will be a cut option for them when he's like $6 million they can free up there, and you see all the free agents, so finding a second running back, third running back in depth is going to be something we look at later, but I could see them going and valuing someone higher in the draft at a running back position too, just depending on who they bring in coaching staff wise, but Javante Williams is a stud, I like him a ton hopefully he comes back fully healthy from that injury i was really sad man he was on my fantasy team too but it's okay it's all cool just fantasy football i don't care about that i love football anyway on to the running back position this is the only thing i will say while they're good like they've got a good group of receivers suck tim patrick also got injured at the beginning of the season didn't even get to play they've got a good group of weapons they are missing a key piece to this offense and that's the yak guy right they're hoping maybe kj hamler or you know mantra washington could be that sort of piece and we'll see down the line but maybe kendall hinton hinton the quarterback you know what i'm saying but anyway <laughs> kj hamler eh, i don't know if he's going to be the long term you know there for them but mantra washington we'll see if he can develop and whatnot brandon johnson's been playing a bit ultimately they need a yak dude in this offense. Jerry Judy, I love Jerry Judy. I think he's going to be on the cusp of a breakout. And next year, watch out for Jerry Judy. If he can stay healthy, the dude could be one of the better receivers in the NFL. He just continue to work on his contested catch ability. His route running is unbelievable. One of the best already in the NFL. I mean, even coming out of college from Alabama was an unbelievable route runner. 
The thing that holds him back in terms of the yak ability is he he's a little bit lanky and sometimes it makes it a little bit more tricky. Not that he's not a smooth player in and out of his breaks and stuff like that and being able to turn on the jets when he needs to. But I do think, you know, he's not maybe this crazy yak guy. But he can add more of that to his game. And I think that's something he will, he will work on this offseason. He'll still have occasional drop issues. He's going to get better, hopefully, at that throughout his time. But Jerry Judy, I think, could be on the cusp of being this team's number one. I already think he is their number one weapon. And I think he could be a number one receiver in the NFL very, very soon. Sutton, to me, is a high-value number two. He's a very solid receiver. I don't think he's a number one guy, and he doesn't add a whole ton after the catch either, but a nice X receiver on the boundary to have for Russell Wilson. Tim Patrick coming back will be huge. He's another big-bodied outside receiver, so that will help out their offense a lot next year in general, but you always have injuries, and I think adding one more piece, a weapon in the yak game would be something, whether it's another running back who can add some ability there after the catch in the screen game you name it or at the receiver position one of the two they need to add someone in there tight end wise i feel really good about it greg dolchik's has looked really good and albert oh i'm not going to pronounce his full name man i struggled i struggled with that one but albert O is solid too he just needs to stay healthy i need to see more of him but he you know also he can rumble a little bit he had some he has some obviously some nice speed and some yak ability to his game as a tight end dolchik's has looked really, really good this season. I think he's going to be their number one tight end going forward. You got some blocking tight ends, some dudes who filled in for injuries. Greg Dolchik's been injured, and Alberto has been injured for a good chunk of the season. He's back healthy, though, recently, so that's good. Over the past week, he got back, but that's what you got in your tight end room. Just maybe a depth a depth piece in terms of like getting a blocking tight end and free agency. Not that big of a need. Offensive line. You're, you know, it's a good offensive line. It, it really is. You got Greg Bowles, who, Garrett Bowles, Greg Bowles, Garrett Bowles, who's injured, and that was a big blow for them. However, I will say, between, it really, Cameron Fleming's been their left tackle. He's played right tackle, left tackle throughout the entirety of the season, so it's like you have to kind of watch him go forward when you're watching games and stuff. Like, oh, the Cam Fleming's playing right tackle today. Oh, he's playing left tackle. The dude bounces all over the place, man. He's unbelievable. But he's actually played well, too. I will say, Cameron Fleming's been pretty solid. Calvin Austin's been okay, too. They both have been solid for coming in and stepping up. I, they're both free agents. I'd try to bring one of those guys back, at least as depth going into next season. You feel great if they're a swing tackle tackle for you maybe not as a starter though long haul you need to figure something out at that right tackle position and that's why I have that marked as a first round slash free agency you need to pick somebody up or you know and or the draft right you got to get someone in that right tackle position and I think that could be the number one priority but Garrett Bowles super athletic tackle very very good continue to work on his power Dalton Reisner he's as solid as you come I don't know if Dalton Reiser ever is going to be like this top tier guard, but he's just, you know, down to down consistency wise with Reisner. He'll let up some plays, but for the most part, you know what you're getting from him. He's not an elite athlete. He doesn't have crazy power, but he's got, you know, enough. He's got enough of everything. He's just really solid, good balance, good feet, all of those things. They're there with Dalton Reisner. So he's kind of like a fringe do you pay him big money sort of dude, replacement level, a starter in that fringe category. But to me, very solid uh, starter. I'd look to pay him, bring him back. He's a free agent. That's a priority to me. I think he's a core player. Lloyd Cushenberry, I do expect him to get better. It was unfortunate he got injured, but he's been looking better. Obviously, he's gotten better and better each season. Lloyd Cushenberry has all the tools. He's not the most athletic guy, but he's got good length and good power to him, like really good power dude, can hold up in pass pro as he continues to refine his technique. But again, not going to be this dude that you move out on these huge pull blocks and stuff like that. Now, Quinn Myers, he's got some he's got some zip off the line, no doubt about it. Myers is turning into one of the better offensive linemen in the NFL and continues to get better with his overall technique. Like I said, he's got some power to his game and can get out in the open space, let him go on the screen game and hunt down players, linebackers, because Quint Miners, the big belly, will definitely uh, do that. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Just find a right guard or a right tackle for the future. Graham Glasgow stepped up over at center with Lloyd Cushenberry being injured and on IR. Glasgow's looked rough, man. I don't know what's going on with Glasgow. Normally a solid uh, swing guard or even a starter, but he's really struggled this season. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe just a little bit out of place. Luke Wattenberg, I did watch him versus the Chiefs. And oh, man, it was brutal. It didn't matter whether it was going up against like Mike Dana or Chris Jones. Chris Jones made a lot. I mean, 
just uh, he's a rookie, so give him some time out of Washington. But I'm not banking on him being a long-term option in terms of one of those starting. But it might be a swing center though for you or guard, just depending on how it goes there. Uh, but that's their offense, mainly right tackle. They're being their biggest area of need, and then another yak threat, whether it's a running back or a receiving weapon, someone like that. But let's go ahead and shift gears onto the defense now and the roster we see. The roster I see, and it is going to be here. You got your free agents and all that core players out there. So let's go ahead and roll right into the defensive team needs now. And uh, what I'm going to start out with saying is this secondary. It's unbelievable. It's the core of this base, and it's a good defense in general. A couple things we need to clean up, but it starts with Patrick Sertan, one of the best corners in the NFL already, one of the best in the league. Speaking of one of the best in the league, Kwan Alexander, underrated player, really good, best slot corner maybe even in the league right now, one of the better ones, at least let's put it that way, really, really good player. Ronald Darby, he's been injured for a good chunk of the season. You're going to have a situation on your hands. Do you let him go? Does he stay or does he go? Demaria Mathis will be a guy you keep a close eye out on from Pittsburgh. He's really ramped up and played well in like of Ronald Darby and his injury. So I think that you can roll out with Demaria Mathis. Patrick Sertan and Kawan Williams next season. Williams under contract till 2024. Maybe you look long term at finding a slot corner for the future. But for the time being, looking pretty good. Maybe some more depth at the outside position too. Maybe in free agency could be a need. But for the most part, looking really good at the cornerback position. Safety wise, you're also looking pretty dang good. Even though Kareem Jackson, who really is a starter, right? I list as you know, as over backup, but he's a starter full on with, with Caden Stearns being injured. But I think long term, you see Caden Stearns, Justin Simmons rocking out next year as your two starting safeties. Justin Simmons, maybe you find more competition down the line, even though he's been a beast and an absolute ball hog, you want to keep him around. But at the end of the day, you look at that contract and say, hey, maybe we bring in a little bit more competition for the future just in case he starts struggling down the line because you can get out of that contract and save a lot of money. But that's really all that it is. I'm not looking to replace him at the time of this or anything like that anytime soon. But you just keep those things in the back of the mind, always looking ahead in future contracts. PJ Locke, a nice third, fourth safety. You want to keep him around. Maybe the Larian Turner yell out of OU can you know, be a nice fourth safety for you going forward. But Caden Stearns was on the cusp of a breakout year until that injury, which is a little unfortunate. But he's got all the versatility to play in that back, and I like him a lot for the future and a core player on this defense. And then linebacker position. It starts with Josie Jewell. He's a beast. He's a playmaker, no doubt about it. He has been the better of the two in coverage. Singleton's been really good as a tackler. Now, Josie Jewell's been good of a tackler, too. I feel like it was tough for me to rank. I'd say Jewell, if I had to say who's a better linebacker, I think Jewell's really, really good, man. And he's made a lot more plays in terms of just coverage. And he loves Patrick Mahomes. I'll just say that. <laughs> he hits with the Chiefs. I don't know what it is, but the interception's rolling with Josie Jewell versus the Chiefs. Anyway, uh, Josie Jewell really saw a linebacker. And Singleton's played well, too, man. He's been a tackling machine out there. There. He's just right in, he's a lot of times in the right place, right situation. He's not the coverage guy. And that's why I say this. They need help in the coverage game. They need a good coverage linebacker. Someone with a little bit more speed to cover tight ends, cover running backs. That's kind of their Achilles heel other than, you know, uh, some you know adding more pass rush and getting home more often on this defense as someone who can cover those tight ends and running backs more consistently. They play a lot of zone coverage and you know off coverage in this defense right now but i think adding in some more speed at the linebacker position would be a nice addition to this group so maybe finding a speed linebacker along with josie jewel for the long term would be good i mean jonas griffin is a solid backup rotational guy i would want to keep him around exclusive restricted shouldn't be a problem at all justin stratton are more of a, a, a special teamer type of dude and then you get onto the defensive line where I, it's really tough because I think they've got a lot of young talent between Nick Benito and Baron Browner. Both of those guys have shown flashes off the edge, but they both need to learn how to get to the passer more consistently, utilize their hands, utilize their tools, again, more consistently. But they've got crazy speed off the edge, and you see the bend with Baron Browner and Nick Benito, what they can bring to your defensive line rotation. And I understand why they let go of Bradley Chubb. But since they've lost Bradley Chubb, there's no doubt that this has been, there's been a drop off in pass rush and getting to the quarterback and efficiency because they blitz a ton, man. They blitz a lot. They blitz all night. We blitz all night. This ain't the Titans, baby, but this is the Denver Broncos. Dangerous Russ. What do we got? But you know what I'm saying? Like Nick Benito, Baron Browner, I like them for the future. And Randy Gregory is a stud when he's out there. But the problem is he's never out there. It seems like he's been injured throughout his career. I'm worried about it. You can get out of his contract next season. So 
do you think about it? If someone's there in the first round, if a Leatu Leatu or a Latu Leatu or if a, you know, a BJ Ojolari or whoever, right? Maybe you like someone there, Lucas Van Nesh who just declared. You never know. Like, I don't hate that as an option for them if you wanted to get another pass rusher opposite with Nick Benito and Baron Browner. Or, or, you know, in the rotation, maybe Benito and Brownie would be your ultimate starters. But it just depends on how you want to do it. I'm not going to lean that way, but it is something you can think about. Hopefully, Randy Gregory can stay healthy because the dude is really good. I mean, the dude gets pressure on quarterbacks when he's out there. He was dominant. The games I watched, he was out there. Well, he was crazy, man. Anyway, that's kind of the only thing. And Jonathan Cooper is a nice rotational piece as well. So you got a good group of edge rushers. Like all these guys, even Jacob Martin, I saw him making some plays out on the edge. You have to think about, you can save like $4 million on Jacob Martin. So maybe we let him go with Benito, Browner, and Cooper, and Gregory. Interior-wise, I'd say this is really where your bigger needs come into play. Not to say their interior is bad or it's soft. But I do think they're going to need to replenish some of what they've lost throughout the years and Shelby Harris. And, and, and I think Matt Hennison can be a nice rotational player from Wisconsin. Uzo Warike can be a nice rotational guy as well. Good run defender, has a lot of the length you look for and things like that. But Purcell is a cap casualty option you could look at. So I don't know if they're going to do that, but Purcell has been a solid in nose tackle, you know, and DJ Jones been a good nose tackle too for them. Deshaun Williams has made some plays, but I think long term, you know, if he's a free agent and you may want to look to add in another option on that interior pass rush position with Draymond Jones, who's really their best pass rusher on the interior. Jonathan Harris has been a nice rotational piece too for them, but Draymond Jones is a free agent. I prioritize bringing him back. He definitely has some nice ability to get after the passer. Still needs to work on his run ability over in his power and consistency there because sometimes he'll get a little pushback in the run game, but for the most part, he's a really good pass rusher and they want to keep him around. It shouldn't be super expensive. Probably be like the eight to $10 million range, but that's kind of my view on it so overall i think finding some secondary depth in the later rounds maybe a, a eventual slot corner to be an understudy for kawan williams uh, in terms of safety i think you should look at a guy who can play like a hybrid role for you who can cover tight ends be a mismatch sort of dude help you out in that category also come into the box and play as a linebacker so i think looking for that in combination with linebacker could be something you look at it might be the biggest need on this defense other than the interior defensive line which i think finding another three tech five tech someone who can play alongside of uh, DJ Jones, keep him as your nose tackle, keep Mike Purcell, and you roll out with those two guys as your rotation on the interior, and Draymond Jones, I want to prioritize keeping him. So that's kind of my view on it. It obviously depends with the new coaching staff, who you bring in, what scheme they want to run. But let's talk free agency strategy now, and you see their cap situation. It's 13 and some change, not too bad. And when you look at the contracts itself, they're actually not too bad. People talk about, oh, dangerous Russ, his contract situation, it's crazy. It's actually very favorable for a team. He's like he's he's under contract for under 30 million over these next couple of seasons and even when he hits 35 in like 2025 that's not bad. When you look forward to 2025 and you say we're only paying Russell Wilson 35 million dollars, that's nothing crazy compared to what you're going to see from these other quarterbacks. Now 2026 it gets up to like 55 million for 2026 and 2027, but you can restructure if Russ is playing better or you can get out of it at that point and you can save like $35 million if he's really struggling. So it's not like that they're completely tied. Yes, they're tied until 2025, but hopefully with a new coaching staff and a new regime that they can get some things figured out. So that's why I'm not worried about it. And you look at these contracts in general that they have, they don't have any bloated contracts that they cannot really get out of. Even Randy Gregory, they can get out of his contract. I think this cap situation is really, they've, they're fine. They're doing a good job. So I give credit to Patton, and I think that going forward, we'll see how things are done. But I, I'm not too worried about it. I think people are blown away out of proportion. I was getting ready to go, oh boy, this could be brutal. And then I saw the cap situation. I'm like, this is good contract, man. That's good business with Russell Wilson, who I think is going to bounce back and be a really good quarterback, and you're getting him a lot cheaper than what you're going to have to pay these other quarterbacks You know that are elite or at least top 10. They go for a lot more on the market than what Russell Wilson's going to be going for. Uh, going on to the re-signs themselves, I'm prioritizing Dalton Reisner and then bringing back either Calvin Austin or Anderson or Cam Fleming. One of those guys want to make sure we bring someone back as a swing tackle or even a day one right tackle. Both of those guys have experience and can play on those, you know, that position for them as a day one dude. 
which gives you some help. If you bring in a rookie, you never do know if they're ready. You all those things you got to consider out. So I want to make sure we bring back one of those dudes. Shouldn't be super expensive. Don Don Reisner around that eight to ten million dollar mark for three years. I don't have a problem with that. Good solid starting left guard. Uh, they're tough to find in the NFL, man. They really are. And then defensively, I'm prioritizing all these guys. I want to bring Draymond Jones back on a nice three year deal somewhere in that seven to eight million dollar range. I think is very fair for Draymond Jones. And then Alex Singleton. You know, two-year deal wouldn't be a bad option. A one- to two-year deal if you can bring him on a one, you know, five-year million deal, something like that. It doesn't matter. Just bring in him because he's a solid linebacker, and then I want to draft someone as well for the future. Jonas Griffin, another dude you can bring back on the cheap. Exclusive restricted free agent. Great backup linebacker to have in rotation for injuries. P.J. Locke, another guy I want to keep around. He's a restricted. No, shouldn't be an issue at all. Nice third, fourth safety to have on your roster. Cut options. Now, let's talk about this. I'm not cutting Justin Simmons, but it is an option if you were to bring in some depth at safety or if you see someone on the board that you can't pass up on, right? If Brian Branch is available at pick 29, you're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Then you could do that and save $11.5 million post June 1st. Garrett Bowles, again, another option. I'm not doing it. I think Garrett Bowles is a solid quality left tackle. Not an elite left tackle, but a good one, and you keep him around protect dangerous Russ and then offensive line Graham Glasgow I am letting him go save 11 million dollars I think that makes a lot of sense for them Ronald Darby would be another one I'd go ahead and let go 10 million dollars yeah I'd save that money and go sign a cheaper corner who can come in there and give you a nice veteran presence and then Chase Edmonds let him go six million dollars save no doubt about it kind of a no-brainer Jacob Martin, I think it's kind of a decision between Jacob Martin and Mike Purcell. I went ahead and cut Jacob Martin because I feel better about the depth at the edge position with Benito and Cooper and all those guys that you have on your roster as depth pieces for injuries. Uh, So I'm not cutting Mike Purcell, but it is an option. KJ Hamler is an option, not cutting him, but it is something you could think about. Josie Jewell is another option, but I'm I'm keeping Josie Jewell, absolutely. He's played really well this season, not letting him go. Sign options. So bringing in step the guard, Bobby Hart, I don't know, but Bobby Hart can also play swing tackle for you if you needed to in a pinch. Both of those guys, Max Garcia, will give you a little bit of depth at the guard position. You got your starting guards locked in, so I feel good about that, but it's just finding a fourth or third, fourth guard. Uh, Receiver-wise, I'm looking for a little bit of a yak weapon. McCole Hardman, Paris Campbell, both guys would be really interesting. I don't know how much they're going to cost, but if you wanted to maybe spend a little bit extra money to add someone who can kind of add a little juice after the tackle or after the catch, then one of those guys could really help you out in your receiving core and maybe get you some screen game action. And then, or underneath action, get him, you know, just get the ball in their hands. That's what they need this next season. Let me make it a little bit easier for Russell Wilson. Running back-wise, just bringing in a backup for Javante Williams, Miles Gaskin, Travis Homer with, hey, Homer, right? He knows tra- he knows Russell Wilson a little bit, so they could have some chemistry there as a nice little receiving option and a receiving running back option. And then Ross Dwayley as a blocker, as, you know, backup, just any backup, even Mercedes Lewis if he wants to continue playing. or uh, There's a lot of tight ends out there. I didn't want to list too many, but that's kind of my view on the offense. Defensively now, Trevon Mullen or Sidney Jones or you name it, right? There's so many veterans out there you could bring in as a cheaper option than Ronald Darby because hopefully Demary Mathis can step up and be your long-term starter opposite of uh, Patrick Sertan and Kawan Williams in the slot. So that would be kind of my view on it. Get cheaper there as a fourth corner. And then we can look to draft someone too or whatever. And then Kawan Alexander, if you wanted to, like, see, he'd be a nice little speed option for them at that linebacker position, help them out in the coverage game. So I do like Kawan Alexander as an option for them in combination with the draft. And if you were to let go of Mike Purcell and say, hey, you know what, we'll save the $3.5 million. we'll go sign Jonathan Hankins as a backup to DJ Jones as a nose tackle, that is an option to get even cheaper because you could probably get Jonathan Hankins somewhere in that 1.5 ballpark and then you ballpark. No, no hot dogs out here. We're not talking about hot dogs. Pull out the grill, but we got Purcell on, I don't know, man, Duracell batteries now, but we got all the different things. So those are options, ultimately, Spending-wise, you're probably looking at the $34 million, and a lot of these are just basically re-signings. My only one splurge signing was to go after maybe a yak receiver because I think that would be a good option for them. 
But it's now. On to the draft we go for the Denver Broncos here for the seven round. Let's see what we got. We got their draft picks first and foremost. I like the Bradley Chubb move. Getting a first rounder. And hey, you could always draft another edge rush, especially with as deep as this draft class is. If they wanted to, they could go out and get an edge in the first round. Now you got a map and blueprint of things that I'm going to do. And things will change in free agency and all those things. You got to take a look at the boards and you know how that all end up structuring out but here are their draft picks you got seven draft picks you got two third rounders those are going to come in handy no doubt about it but let's see what russell's got going on here for the draft we're starting off with our first pick at round number 129 it's via the miami dolphins or via actually the 49ers i don't know you know all those things working out but this is the 49ers pick from the miami dolphins and it's going to be dewan jones the bohemoth from the ohio state university look at him right there that stature that base. I mean, that dude is a monster. He's ready to come out there and protect Russell Wilson. And I do think he'll work out in this scheme for a team that might want to run the ball and they can get plague action going to help him out. Because, yes, the the thing you'll talk about, is he the most athletic guy? No, but for his size, he's like Daniel Falalele on steroids. The dude has got that to his game, but more athleticism. And he is a dude where you just basically have to go around him. You can't go through with this guy. Super strong. He's a little bit skinny in the feet, and that's something. But it does help him get out on the move enough and be able to get in zone blocks and things like that if you need him to. So Dewan Jones going to be the plug-and-play right tackle for the future on this offensive line. This team's done a great job of drafting offensive line. So whoever it is, they'll find someone, whether it's Cody Mock, whether it's uh, you know, so many guys out there you could take a look at that I think that are good options for them. Darnell Wright would be a really good option too, just changing up with different players. But Dewan Jones, a really good player, man. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. J.L. Skinner here out going to our next pick, which this is an interesting one. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. This is what I'm saying, man. This would be an ideal fit for him to come in here. Now, I, I, we'll see how the... The coaching staff, what they bring in, but I think J.L. Skinner would add what they need to this defense, which is someone who can cover up on some tight ends, be a dude that works over the middle of the field, and helps them bring some enforcer mentality into this defense, which, yeah, they've got some players, but J.L. Skinner could definitely provide that as that hybrid linebacker safety on this defense. Six foot four, 220 pounds, playmaker at Boise State. And I feel, oh, I love him, man. He's a fun player to watch out there. The only question I have with him is does he have the overall smoothness in the hips, being that he is a little bit on the low, you know, taller, lanky side? That's the only thing of my concern. But besides that, the dude is a great tackler and he's going to really help out this defense. And he's going to add some more playmaking ability into this defense as well, which they already have some good playmakers. Then we go on to here, Johnny Jerzon Newton out of Illinois. We'll see if he ends up declaring, but this guy has got some twists. Which he's got some speed. He's got some more pass rush to this defense. And especially if you were to lose Draymond Jones, he could be a nice little replacement there for Draymond Jones, who they also got in the third round, I believe. But they got him from Ohio State. They get this dude from Illinois, also from the Big Ten. Very good player. If he can continue to get stronger and whatnot, he can be a real wrecking havoc there. But he is at Illinois. That defense is really, really talented. And Jerzon has been one of the key pieces and risers to the point where now he's a top 10 or top 100 pick, a top 10 defensive tackle in this draft class. But you see that relentless speed on film that flashes with this guy. Man, watch out. Fig Newtons. We go on to Deuce Vaughn. And oh, let's go. Deuce is loose. Ah, yeah, man, he's going to be loose here with Javante Williams. He adds, and this guy, maybe not be the most, you, you look at missed tackles and, you know, the stats, they're not technically out there with Deuce Vaughn. It's because He's so small that he makes people miss. He's so agile. He's like Barry Sanders in a sense, like nobody can tackle the guy because he's so dang agile. I mean, not Barry Sanders, but I'm just saying like, sometimes there's not a stat for what Deuce Vaughn does. I think he's going to be the most, he's one of the most underrated players in the draft. I mean, people know about Deuce Vaughn, but they're going to take him late because of the size. Oh, he's five foot six. He's a midget. Dude, he is unbelievable. And I'm not as concerned about the durability as others because, again, he just doesn't get tackled. He doesn't, you know, he avoids big hits and stuff because he is so agile. So I think Deuce Vaughn will be able to make it in the NFL. And whoever gets him is going to be really happy with the dude they get. And you pair him along with Javante. I love that combination. Like I said, get him on some screens. Get him space. He's not meant to be this 20 touch guy between the tackles but that's why you got Javante Williams who's going to be a beast in that department and you got your power you got your slasher and you got your dasher but anyway watch out deuces loose 
But we go on to our next pick in the fifth round. It's Katri Clark or Katri Clark out of Louisville. And this guy, man, he might be small, but he's mighty. And he's got great looseness in his hips and change of direction. I think he'd be a nice little slot option for them in the future, depending on what they want to do. But a very, very solid ball instincts, off coverage dude there at Louisville, whether it was man or zone. I think he can play at a high level. So getting some more cornerback depth for the future always can add in, help you out. Oh, ho, 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 Stinson Bennett. No, this is just a backup pick. This is not a future quarterback. Look, uh, you know, sort of thing to replace Russell Wilson. Now, I think Stinson Bennett's a fun player. And, man, he just I love his moxie, his game. He is 25 years old. We'll see if he comes back to college. But he's a dude I want on the roster. And you get him behind Russell Wilson as a great backup for your organization, for your team, right? He's a good leader on and off the field. Loves Stinson Bennett. The dude just, you know, like I say, he's got the gamer in him, man. And hey, he's not a bad player, man. He's not. He's just the size, the strength, you know, all those things, the durability at the next level. Being five foot eleven, sub five foot eleven, one ninety. A lot of teams are like, oh boy, man. Anyway, on to our final pick. It's gonna be Mark Evans out of Arkansas Pine Bluff. And who, you're like, who's this guy? Is he bluffing me? No, man, no poker out here. Phil Ivey, we got aces up, man. Deuces. But Mark Evans, guy who played left tackle there at Arkansas Pine Bluff. And I think he's ultimately going to shift into guard or even center with his six foot two and his frame at 295. I think that's where he'll end up. He needs to hit the weight room. He's going to be a developmental project. We'll see him at the Senior Bowl. See how he does against some of these guys. Ultimately, he's a bit of a project, but he, he's got some nice balance, some good speed and athleticism as, as a developmental guy. Sure, add in a little bit more depth onto your offensive line. Why not? Here is the recap as you see Deuce Vaughn and the rest of this draft and what we were able to do. And now we get into the actual roster itself. And you see what we've been able to do. Just adding in Stinson Bennett as a backup. Again, I'm not a player replacing Danger Russ. I like Russell Wilson. I really believe he's going to bounce back. I can't say it enough. All those haters, watch out. Deuce Vaughn, Deuce is loose. Adding him with Javante Williams at a free agent. Whatever, they're going to add, you know, add a little bit more depth than that at the running back position, but I just kind of did what it is there. You can keep Taylor Beatty if you want to or do whatever you want to do, but those are basically my main rotations for the time being, right? And then the receiver position, we had in a free agent to come in here. Maybe, like I said, a Nicole Hardman or a Paris Campbell. Maybe somebody who can add some yak ability would be an option. I'm not saying they have to do it. But at least adding in Deuce Vaughn is going to help you out in that department quite a bit. Uh, offense line, we add in a right tackle in Dewan Jones to be our plug-and-play guy. Whether it's a Darnell Wright, a Dewan Jones, or maybe even a Cody Mock, who knows? Even though Mock might be more of a guard. They bring in someone at that right tackle position going to be extremely important. Uh, free agency-wise, we bring in a backup guard and then also a free agent at tight end as a blocker. And then tackle-wise, just bringing back Calvin Isle. Anderson would be really nice. Mr. Anderson's back. But we need to do that. And you kind of roll from there as a nice... You got your three tackles with Dewan Jones, Garrett Bowles, and Calvin Anderson. Then we go on to the defense itself. What we've been able to do, adding in J.L. Skinner, the beast from Boise State, coming in here as that sub-package linebacker, fitting that modern-day role, what everybody in the NFL is coming. Well, not maybe everybody, but a lot of teams are looking for. And he's going to add in some nice speed and some enforcer ability to that defense that they could really utilize. And then on the defensive line, we had in Johnny. Here's Johnny, Jerzon Newton, out of Illinois, adding some more pass rush and a rotation of Matt Henningsen and uh, he couldn't, you know, roll out Uzo Warike too in that package. Who's been playing more as a B gap player. They haven't utilized him really in the A gap, but I think he gives you some versatility with his length and his strength. And then we didn't do anything on the edge position, but I felt like between hopefully Randy Gregory staying healthy, Baron Browner and some young talent, Nick Benito, they can get better and add more pass rush as they get better developed, and that way, you know, we can get home more consistently. Cornerback position, just adding in Katrie Clark there from Louisville as a developmental slot behind Kwan Williams for the future, right? Looking forward into the future because Williams is a free agent in 2024, getting older. Maybe you do that and go from there. And then we had in a free agent to compete with Damari Mathis, a veteran option, whoever that may be, just to come in and, and also for injuries, right? Because you have injuries at corner. You need some more depth. I like Jaquan McMillan. Maybe keep an eye out on him. I don't know. ECU dude. And then safety, we don't do anything really. But we do bring in J.L. Skinner, who can also play in the back end for you. So that's it, man. That's the Denver Broncos. Let me know where I was wrong, where I was right, all those things. Hopefully, uh, we were able to fix this team. Coaching staff is going to be a big one. Like I said, I think Dan Quinn, someone like that, someone who has that veteran 
no ship can come in and compand the locker room, all those things. I don't know what everyone said, but just, hey, they need like a Doug Peterson, right? That's kind of what they need. They need to get someone of similar to come in here and just clean things up, get more discipline, because the penalty yards, they're number one in the NFL, they're number one in the NFL, and missed tackles, that's a problem. Those are two signs that the coaching staff needs to be adjusted. That's why I want to bring in someone who has the know-it-all of a Dan Quinn who can come in there and just really do things the right way, hopefully, and take this team to where we expect it for the Denver Broncos. So I hope everyone has a really cool day. Be safe out there, all this wild stuff, man. NFL's crazy, but I'll talk to you later.